Um, some of the work that we've been doing at Manchester on, uh, I'll try to do some, usually we tended to look at more fundamental test cases, um, but I always wanted then to see, well, how do we bridge that gap between academia and applying it on a realistic case and seeing if those benefits can be seen uh, when we go to more complicated. Um, I'm probably sure most people are sick of seeing Ahmed car body things, so, but I'm using it as a validation tool to then go to the um, proper car model. So I don't need to tell, uh, tell everyone here that CFD is becoming you know, more and more a crucial design tool. Um, I'd also say that the increase in high performance computing uh, has made that more of a, a, a reality, uh, and in particular to try and get more and more accuracy, uh, particularly for uh, the need for air acoustics uh, information and just to greater accuracy um, as you want to perhaps do more CFD and um, less wind tunnel until the end. Um, what I'm interested in particularly is uh, moving from RANDs to, to higher order methods. Uh, and one, first of all, looking, can we do any more with RANDs? Secondly, then, what can we do with the hybrid RANDs, LES, and methods like that, uh, and how that can be used in an uh, industrial <laughs> process. So um, we've been working with um, CDDAPCO um, to try and look at developing some models, turbulence models, and put them in the code and testing on some more realistic cases and, and seeing uh, if some of these more advanced models can make a difference. Um, and I'll go through these four different models Realizable KE, you've seen quite a few presentations this morning of that, and then some uh, uh, Reynolds stress models uh, and another uh, model. So I won't go through all the equations, but effectively we're looking at a model which is a bit more representative of the near wall effects because that seems to contribute most to the turbulent production and is usually very sensitive for heat transfer, um, but also predicting the correct separation point. So uh, there's a, a paper on this, uh, Flavian Billard, who did it, um, but effectively it's more advanced uh, near wall treatment. Uh, and the same, this was used for a different conference, I'm not going to go into all of it, but effectively just a Reynolds stress model which has some more robust near wall modeling. So in a couple of codes, one which is uh, code Saturn, which is the open source code we've used at Manchester for quite a while, quite well validated, excellent scaling, um, and also star CCM. Um, we have quite a unique relationship with them that we help them develop some of the models and um, we have uh, well, quite a few licenses, so we can run some of the bigger cases. Um, I won't go much explaining this. I think everyone knows this test case quite well. Uh, it's interesting from a turbulence modeling point of view in terms of when they can predict it well uh, and, and not. Uh, and you know that the, this critical angle between going from 25 to 35 is typically when you see the uh, separation point being quite challenging to get, especially for some of the RANS models. So what we did, we quickly ran something in Star TCM. We wanted to show the 35 degree angle case, which is the one which is uh, generally quite easy to get, it's where the separation is complete over the, uh, the back of the body and the counter-rotating vortices don't um, manage to keep it uh, attached. Uh, and so this is just standard kind of automotive setting, F1 settings, coupled solver. We tried the different um, models, went up to around 20 million or so just to make sure we got uh, grid conversions. And you can see that broadly, um, all the models do quite well. There's obviously discrepancies. Um, there's some error cancellation going on. Um, turbulent kinetic energy, streamwise velocity, pretty good from an engineering kind of prediction. Uh, and you can see the same. There's some discrepancies from some of the models. Um, but in general, it's able to um, predict the flow reasonably uh, well. This is the 25 degrees um, uh, model. Now, this is a lot more challenging. Um, the grid was provided by um, Professor Kranovich from Chalmers. And you can see that um, all the models do very poorly. And they all underpredict the level of turbulence in the initial uh, shear layer, which comes off here. If you don't have enough turbulence, you don't have enough turbulent mixing, and the separation region is too large. We get exactly the same result in code Saturn with all the same models. So uh, the, the code is, we get results uh, independent of the code. Uh, and again, um, you see the, the same problem here. Uh, I'm not going to go into this now, but the, we did a paper on it recently to use um, DDS and also a slightly more advanced um, embedded DDS where we just did it on a certain region of the car. And then we managed to get very good results with the correct turbulence levels and the, and the right. So the conclusion from 
uh, this test case, which is here, is basically that RAND can do well in some cases, but in others it can do terribly and completely the wrong trend. And for that, we advocate using these higher order methods. But of course, 12 hours maybe for the steady, uh, where you're talking maybe a couple of weeks to the others. I know some people can optimize this, but this is using perhaps unoptimized uh, work. Um, now for the, the driver um, car, this is probably reasonably well known as an attempt to have an open source model with many different variations um, by Audi, BMW, and TUM. Um, we focused on, after all the talk today, we on purpose didn't do rotating tires, so we didn't have to worry about that. We picked the, the version of the model which had the smooth underbody and the stationary wheels. And um, the rest, again, similar setup to what we had for the Ahmed car body. Um, interestingly, um, we wanted to, again, look at mesh conversions first. We took the RKE model, which is used the standard for most commercial codes, and we found that we uh, managed to get grid uh, independence by around 40 million cells. But then, to be extra sure, I thought, well, let's run that with the other turbulence models as well, for both the configurations. We ran the estate fastback and notchback. And um, what you found was that most of them reached convergence by the medium grid, but the SST model uh, did not and was more unstable to that regard. Um, I'll come to the results now. The main conclusion, what we found, was the variability. That you may have the fastback, which is broadly predicted well by most of the models, apart from one, but then you go to the estate and they predict it very poorly apart from one. And the delta, if you were just looking at the drag, you know, this is used a lot, for sure in F1 anyway, to look. The delta from going from the estate to the fastback in terms of the design change is around 42 points. Uh, and um, the Asparta Maris gets reasonably close to it, but still maybe 50% off or, or slightly better. Uh, the problem with looking at the drag is, of course, you've got a lot of error cancellation going on from a validation point of view. Where is the model doing bad and where is it doing good? It's not really sure. If you look at the CP, one of the interesting things is, firstly, it doesn't capture this CP correct. This is on the top of the car uh, and the bottom for the fastback. I noticed that in other people's results, they also got exactly the same problem here. I'm not sure if it's because the car's mounted using a strip from the top of the uh, tunnel. Maybe that causes some problems. Um, the SST overpredict the drag it seems to have some quite strange uh, flow here, um, which you can see in this little bit there. But in general, um, these models don't do too bad on this configuration, this fastback configuration. And you can see the CP at the back is not correct, but uh, close. Um, I'll mention this actually more for the estate car, because um, it's a bit more obvious. For the estate, we see that all the models um, struggle quite a bit to get the, the correct flow at the back. It reminds me of the Ackman car, but at 25, where they all give the wrong uh, flow. Um, the SST being the worst. Um, but again, we could really do with extra information. I was encouraged by hearing one of these speakers before saying about doing PIV uh, behind the body. That would be really interesting to have something like the Ahmed car body has um, to give more information on what's going on. And I had to change the scale. It was so far off the experimental CP. Um, e even changing the scale, it's, it's, it's not close to it. So for this, all the RANS models seem to do quite poorly. The one thing I'd say is this is a NACA wingtip uh, case, axle velocity. You can only get the vortex um, strength correct with uh, a Reynolds stress model or such like. Um, and this, I have no idea if this is actually happening in reality. I don't have the experimental data. But you can see with the EBRSM, these vortices pursue for a lot longer than with the SST, which seems to come back to the level of dissipation you have in SST-like models. I'm going to very quickly show this. This is going to be presented more SAE hopefully this year. We had a hybrid RANS. We went up to 300 million cells. We tried to do this as well as we could do um, with the proper numerical schemes. It was run on 1,000 cores at the Barcelona Supercomputing Center. We tried to get a, as good grid as we could. These were some of the metrics we used just to make sure that we actually had a correct hybrid RANS LES. Uh, and just briefly, we're doing more work on this now, but where you have the uh, RANs, these are the DES, coarse, medium, fine grids. Um, particularly the fastback to the estate, the delta with the RANs was around 15. The best RANs model was, I think, 25, and this is 36. So not only is it getting a lot closer to the drag from the estate, 
uh, it's also getting the, the delta between the, uh, the two uh, more correctly. Uh, but of course, this still needs a lot more work. And the one quick thing to say about the DES, over most of the car, it's working RANS mode, and then at the back, it's working LES. So the model you use, be SST, Spartamaris, is going to affect the overall result. So there's also a sensitivity to the underlying RANS model in a hybrid RANS framework. So um, we tried some of these more advanced models, hoping that they would show an improvement. Uh, they did not. Um, that's not to say all RANS models couldn't do. I think if they were specifically developed for some automotive cases, they may be able to show in some improvements. Um, the Atma car body again showed a very switch between where RANS can do well and not. And to some extent, that was reflected with the driver. On a realistic case, um, we found the estate was far more challenging. Uh, and the initial hybrid RANS LES results look quite a lot better, but um, uh, we're still doing a few more simulations uh, on that. So that's it. Thank you.